Dear CG thinkers, welcome to this video where we are going to create this beautiful dirty fabric texture. Perfect for your post-apocalyptic scenes or any fabric that's been through some pretty grim places. As usual, the starting file is available in the description. We will be working on this texture with the help of my add-on materializer. Just to remind you, it's not a material library, but a set of tools to help us create our own materials, tailored to our specific needs. I hope Blender is up and running, because this isn't just about watching, it's all about doing. Let's get started. In the starting file, you will find a material with a few colors that we will use later, and a scene that includes a sphere and an object that's going to serve as our fabric. The UVs are already undraped. I will also show you the baking settings we will need. Uh, and we will need them right now, because we even start the simulation while the object is still flat, I'm going to ask Materializer to create a node called Plan Borders. You will find it in the Pi menu under the Mask section. It takes a few seconds for the bake to finish, and then a node appears in the material. If you take a look at it, we can see a gradient that follows the edges of the shape. We will set that aside for now and start our simulation by pressing the spacebar. The simulation stops uh, at frame 100 and we will use that frame to continue working. The very first thing we need to do is add the polyester node to our material and connect the color, normal and alpha outputs to the principled BSDF. This node lets us create a ton of different material, a different fabric. It's a great example of the power of procedural techniques. By the way, if you want to play around with it, why not try creating a little pair of shorts with different settings? Feel free to let me know in the comment how it goes. I'm changing the blue by using the base color already in the material. I will show the color code on the screen. Next, I'm adjusting the pattern by setting scale Y to 3 and the width parameter for the vertical lines to 3 as well. The width parameter controls the thickness of the fiber. And here's the key. By adjusting this parameter locally, we can simulate tears or loose fabrics. And this is where our famous gradient comes into play. We will use it to reduce the fiber size at the edges and give the fabric a worn look. In the mat section of the pie menu, you will find a node called gradient to grunge. Connect it like this and watch the magic happen. The border position parameter lets you move the border further or closer from the edge. The falloff parameter controls the distance over which the texture will blend, distorting the edges. Texture, contra texture contrast, well, that changes the contrast. The factor controls the straight of um, the straight of the, of the effect. In the generic texture section, you will find all the settings to tweak the deformation's appearance 
which is based, as you might have guessed, uh, on the noise texture node. Next, we will use this black and white mask to vary the fiber size. Add a map range node. Here's what's happening. The white part, value one, is the normal fiber size. The black part, value zero, is the modified fiber uh, fibers size. So I set one for the white and four for the black. We apply the same logic um, we, for the vertical fibers, base size 3 and 12 uh, in the black area. Now, we just need to use a different edge mask to cut the edge of the fabric. With a greater than node, we create a sharp separation. Then we multiply this mask with the fabric's alpha. Quick reminder, white is one, visible. Black is zero, transparent. So the alpha stays intact in the white areas, but disappears in the black areas. Okay, you've got the logic and now we can reuse it twice more. The first time is to create areas where the fabric is relaxed, giving it an extra worn effect. Let's add a grunge 5 node. Is, uh, is the kind of result you get. I modify the scale and the coverage parameter. The look, uh, the result looks good, but I actually want the opposite. Small dark areas and large light areas because it's the dark areas that reduce the fiber thickness. Here's where we get clever. We use the roughness output, which allows us to redefine its minimum and maximum values. So to reverse the result, all we have to do is set the minimum value higher than the maximum value. And just like that, we're all set. Next, we combine this node with the borders. It's simple. Use a math node set to minimum and to keep the lowest value between the two. Looking at the result, we can clearly see that uh, the fabric now has areas with finer fibers. This is a perfect effect for what we're aiming for. One last detail before we move on to the color. Of course, we need to add some little holes. Now, we are entering a part that really highlights the importance of creativity and knowing your tool well. Let's think about it. To create holes, we want small, slightly deformed gradient areas all over the surface. Well, I've got just the node for that, the impact node. Add it in and we're going to repurpose it for something a little different. It generates exactly the pattern we want. However, the variations are too light and so we will add a map range to stretch, rescale the values between 0 and 1. Then, just like before, we combine it with a minimum node.
To really see what's happening, I like to exaggerate the values a bit so it really stands out. Then I gradually reduce them until I find something that looks interesting. Feel free to do the same, adjust it to your task. More holes, bigger holes, it's all up to you. Make some space, because now we're diving into color, and trust me, it's not going to happen in just three nodes. We will start simple. Add two U saturation value nodes, one after the other. The first one will be used to randomly lighten the fabric's lines. This already gives it a bit more life. The second one will do the opposite. It will darken certain spots of the pattern, also a bit randomly. This adds some nuance and we are already starting to believe it a little more. Next, we are adding a mixed color node where we will use um, a brown color for the second input. What we want is to apply this color on the edges of the fabric. The idea here is that the edges tend to absorb, absorb liquids. In short, their color changes. So we will reuse the gradient to grunge node, but this time we're looking for something much more diffuse wider. Quick note, at the output the colors are invert from what we want. No worries, just swap the outputs on the mixed color node and boom, the brown is now correctly positioned at the bottom of the fabric. Then play around with the setting, gradient positioned and fall off. The goal is to get an effect that smoothly follows the edge. Keep it subtle, that's always better. Next, we are adding a new U saturation uh, value node, setting it to a value of 2 and we will duplicate the gradient to grunge node. The goal here is to lighten a thin border at the bottom of the fabric. I will make a quick adjustment. Reapply the texture, refine the mask a bit, and make the edge sharper. Once I connect everything to the HSV node, I realize the, the effect is reversed. No problem. I will add a node invert. And there we go. The lightning happens in the right place. If you're wondering what this is for, just think about the story of this fabric. It's probably been everywhere. The edges have rubbed against the ground. This kind of friction tends to lighten the affected areas by removing dirt. It's a possibility. Now let's move on the real grim, the kind that gives the fabric all its character. We will start by duplicating the HSV node again and setting it to a value of 0 0.1. Yes, I know, I love this node. Honestly, HSV and MapRange are probably the two nodes I use the most by far. Next, we will add a Grunge 0 node, which will serve as our input factor.
And that's it. Simple, quick and effective. Then we will move on to a mix color node for a more creative combination. We are going to reuse grunge zero as the factor, but this time with a different seed value, just to mix up the pattern. For the second input of the mix color, I suggest using a rust color. Yes, I said rust. It's great because it adds lots of different hues all at once. Super handy. The only changes I make are mm, the color. I use one that I've predefined and that you have in the share starting file. I will also display the color code on the screen. Then I lower the brightness to 2 to make it more subtle. Let's add one last detail, some dried liquid stains. And it's super simple. We will use another HSV node set to a value of 5 and combine it with a simple dried droplet node. Through, is, through this example, I think you're starting to really grasp the philosophy behind material creation. We stack layers of variations using different sources. This approach is what gives us rich, um, believable results. In fact, this is a method I've already used in another tutorial that you clearly really liked because it's got many views. The design is looking good, but there's still one little thing to fix. With all the added color effects, we've lost um, a bit of the ambient occlusion. That darkening effect that helps highlight the fabric fibers uh, especially from a distance. So we are going to recreate that effect at the end of the chain using the 8 output from the polyester node. We will add a float curve node to adjust the profile and a mix color node set to multiply. At first, it's way too dark, and this is where the curve comes in. With it, we can make sure the black stays in the cavities where the fibers intersect and has less impact elsewhere. And there you go, that's how you can be proud of making beautiful grim. <laughs> I know it's a weird sentence, but honestly, it's true. Just a little backstory. It's while making this tutorial that I developed the plan border tool. Yep, uh, I could tell something was missing for my fabric. I threw to myself, hey, already, it would be really cool to add edge effect to the fabric. And I answered, yes, that would be definitely better. After some research on internet, some searching on my computer and a bit of coding, the tool keeps progressing. I love this because we can get tired of everything except learning. Bye bye.